All right, moving along. So now this is going to be a little crash course into statistical mechanics. So the main um, topic of this semester is, as you know, thermodynamics. Um, but I really think it's important for us to have a little bit of an introduction into the stat mech world, the statistical mechanics world. Statistical mechanics takes the world of quantum mechanics and combines it with the world of thermodynamics to look at how bulk and molecular properties evolve, or to look at how bulk properties evolve from molecular properties, okay? So very much tied into that extensive versus intensive um, property. Okay, so you're at four boxes. And these four boxes are what I like to call the four things that molecules and atoms can do. They can translate, so that means they can move around. They can rotate, like that. So they can vibrate about a chemical bond, right? Two nuclei can vibrate in and out of each other. And they can do electronic stuff. That electronic stuff is what we know as chemistry. Okay, so I want us to think of these boxes as energy. And in these boxes, I'm gonna put a certain amount, or I'm gonna talk about how much energy we can get out of these things. And I think maybe I can make some, can I make a thicker line? No, okay, that's fine. So let's see here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is draw a line right here. Okay, and I'm going to call that level number one. That's the ground state. Then I'm going to draw another line up here. That is level number two. That is the first excited state. And then I'm going to keep going. I'm going to draw another level here, level three, level four, level five, and so forth. And you'll notice what I'm doing here. I'm drawing these levels tighter and tighter and tighter. As it turns out, these electronic levels uh, go up by one over the square. And we'll get into that in more detail um, in Chem 362. But what I want to point out, for a typical molecule and at or atom, this is just typical, right? So we live at the ground state. That's where we expect all things to be. But if we put some energy into the system and exactly the energy we need, we can get it to level two. Okay, hopefully you remember that from uh, your Gen Chem days. And now obviously each molecule and atom will have different energy spacings. It's what makes them unique. It gives them the fingerprint. However, what is typical, the value of energy needed to undergo this transition, I'm gonna write that down here, um, that is roughly um, about one to 10 electron volts for that first level. So that's general, right? It's, and that's a big range. We noted that one electron volt um, was about 10 minus 19 joules. So 10 electron volt is about 10 minus 18 joules. And that's joule per one single molecule. But what if I wanted to talk about uh, joules per mole? And even more appropriate units that we use would be the kilojoule per mole. Well, the same quantity of energy, this 1 to 10 electron volts, is about a thousand, uh, here we go, oops, undo, is about a thousand kilojoules per mole. So I'm sorry, that got real sloppy here. I think that I have an eraser somewhere. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm, I'm just going to undo that. All right, here we go. So it's roughly, we'll just say, uh, a thousand kilojoules per mole, all right? And obviously there's a range, but that's a good target area. It takes about a thousand kilojoules per mole to get a molecule or to get a mole of molecules, about a thousand kilojoules to go from the ground state to the second excited state, okay? So now if I were to zoom in on this level, right? So suppose I just zoom in way on this level. Just zooming in on that one level would give me the entire energy scale of this vibrational box, okay? And so I can put some energy levels in this uh, vibrational box, 
And um, as it turns out, what we'll discover more in 362 is these levels are evenly spaced. Um, no, I'm not drawing them evenly spaced, but uh, you'll have to pretend. So level one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. They're all evenly spaced. Okay. And once again, we expect all molecules in the vibrational level to exist at their ground state, and I'll talk about why that is. Okay. So the requisite energy for a typical vibration, not all, but for a typical vibration, um, is just a fraction of that electronic level. It's about 0 0.1 to 1 electron volt for a typical spacing in a vibrational energy level. So about 10 times less than the electronic levels. Okay, And in terms of um, kilojoules per mole, that's roughly uh, 10 to 100 kilojoules per mole for a collection of a mole of atoms. Okay, And if, similarly, if I were to zoom in on this level 1 in the vibrational box, we would find a whole bunch of underlying rotational energy levels, okay? And so our rotational energy levels start off close together and then spread out, okay? Level one, level two, level three, level four, and so on and so forth, all the way up, okay? Lots, as it turns out, there's dozens and dozens of rotational levels, more than I care to draw on this picture, all right? And a typical spacing here are what I'm going to call milli-electron volt. So the milli-electron volt, that's one one-thousandth of an electron volt, okay? So that's about 10 to the minus 23 joules. So that's getting to be on equivalent with the value of Boltzmann's constant, okay? And in terms of a collection of these molecules, that's about 10 joules, not kilojoules, but just 10 joules per mole, okay? And now, if I were to zoom in on any of these levels, I would find the translations. And there's no way I can draw enough lines for these translations, so I'm just going to try to um, color this in, right? There are so many levels in this translational box that they form what we call the continuum. Okay, that says continuum. So it makes a continuous stream of energy levels. So really, our rotational, vibrational, and electronic are what we call the quantized energy levels because we have to have exactly the requisite amount of energy to go from one level to the next. If we don't have that amount of energy, if let's say we only have 85% of that energy, it ain't gonna happen. However, with the translational energies, because these energies are so finely spaced together, it's kind of like the convergence of the quantum world to the classical world. So now in these translations, there's, even though we can kind of loosely think of them as energy levels, molecules are really free to have like this continuous translational energy. They're not having to go through this quantized uh, scaling up of energy, okay? So those are the four things molecules can do. I want you to be very well versed and familiar with the four things molecules can do because we're gonna live eat and breathe and die by the four things that molecules can do. And I literally mean that. We are a result. The entire universe as we know it is a result of these four things. Pretty incredible, in my opinion.